Hello, I'm Professor Barba, and this is our second demo to show you how to use Jupyter to develop ideas and use code to tell a story. So when you open Jupyter, this is what you see. This is called the dashboard. And in the first demo, I used my local installation of Jupyter, and I didn't tell you how you could install it in your own computer. I'm not going to tell you that today either, but I am going to tell you that you can go to our website, try.jupyter.org, and you can follow along without installing anything, follow along the demo. So I'm going to do it in my local installation of Jupyter. This is what you need to do. Click on New on the right, select Python 3, and you get a new empty notebook with an empty cell. Remember, the uh, cell has two types, code or markdown. I'm going to choose markdown here to uh, jot down a quick note. And the note is that you can try Jupyter, double um, asterisks to make something bold, try Jupyter by going to the um, URL try.jupyter Dot org. Okay, that is going to be this tab over here. And you would do exactly the same as in the local installation. You would click New. There are several other options here, but you want to pick Python 3. And just as in the local version, you're going to get a uh, empty notebook where you can start um, doing some coding or um, uh, trying things out and follow along. But I'm going to go to, back to my local one. Today's demo is a recap on indexing and slicing. Very powerful technique in Python. So let me shift enter to execute that and leave that as a note. I get a new cell where I'm going to try a few things. So remember, a string is an ordered set of characters. And each character can be accessed by its position using an index. And remember, Python counts starting at zero. So if I define a string, say, the usual thing we start with is hello world equals hello world. Shift enter to execute. That is now defined um, the variable my string as hello world. And I can access, for example, the first character of hello world with the square brackets and the index zero because Python starts counting at zero. So there you have it, H. And of course, I could access a different one, say three or four, <laughs> and I get O, the last character in hello. But slicing allows you to grab a section of the string, more than one character. And we use two indices inside the square brackets separated by a colon. The two indices are the start and end of the section you want to grab. So I could do 0 to 4. And the trick here is to remember that the last index is not inclusive. So 0 to 4 is going to take the first three characters of Hello World. Slicing sometimes is a bit confusing at the start. So I have made here a little figure. In fact, um, my student made this little figure here, slicing.png. Let me show it to you. And it's useful to visualize sometimes the indices into a string as fence posts that separate the characters instead of actual uh, at the position. So for example, for the string engineer, uh, I see the index zero here to the left and the character E is the character to the right of zero. And if I wanted to grab the characters G-I-N in the middle, then the index to start is two because G is to the right of two. And I would have to go all the way to five to contain between those two post, uh, fence posts, two to five, the characters G-I-N. So let's try that in our Jupyter notebook. Let's define it, uh, I don't know, str for string under dash two because it's our second variable that we create. And I'm going to call that, in, I'm not going to use engineer as my string. There it is defined. And now I can access G-I-N by using square brackets, and we said two to five, five is not inclusive, and that gives us gin. Slicing is a very important technique to develop, and there is no substitute for you trying things out. Define a string 
play around with start and, end in, start and ending indices and see if you get what you expect. Trying things out is the only way to get comfortable with it. Let me add a few more cells here to scroll up and have a little more space to show you some new things. Um, Python has a many built-in functions for strings. A technical detail here. Some functions are special and they can operate on special arguments, on specific arguments. For example, functions that operate only on strings, we call them methods, string methods. And when we have methods, we can uh, use dot notation. Dot notation is, let me write this down here for string methods. We're going to use dot notation to, which is a little bit different from just function notations. And let me show you how that works. For example, I'm going to define a variable named quote, and I've saved into my um, um, clipboard a quote from Seymour Papert. It goes like this. What comes first, using or understanding? The natural mode of learning is to first use, leading slowly to understanding. New ideas are a source of power to do something. I really like that quote. Okay, so we've defined a new variable, a string variable named quote, and that is its contents, this longer uh, string now. And I can use, I'm going to shift enter to execute because notice here the square brackets in the input line were empty, meaning that I didn't execute that cell. Um, um, this I didn't point out before, but uh, the counter of the execution is shown there in the, in the input marker. So, for example, count is a method for strings that counts the occurrences of a particular substring. So if I wanted to count the appearances of, say, the letter E in that quote, I could do quote dot, here's the dot notation, count is the method, and brackets the particular substring that I want to count, the letter E. Shift enter and it tells me 14. 14 occurrences of the letter E appear in my quote. That is a very useful string method. Another one is find. Find tells us if a substring occurs in a string. So for example, I could use quote, the name of the string I want to operate on. The method is find, round brackets, and here I put the argument, the particular substring to find. For example, power, shift enter, and it tells me 147, that is the index where my chosen substring starts at. So we expect, let's see, what do you expect if I enter quote 147? Shift enter, P, which is the first letter of the word power. So if I wanted to just write out the word power, maybe I wanted to do a slice that starts at 147 and ends well, I could use 147 plus the length of the word power. So we could do um, quote 147, and now I'm going to use the colon for the um, um, slicing notation, and I can add indices right here, 147 plus, and use the function len to get the length of power, the uh, substring. Let's see if that worked. There we go, it did work, and uh, out comes the string power. Uh, a couple of other string methods that I can show you. One is uh, index. It works just like find, but it throws an error if it doesn't find the substring. And so I could do quote dot find power, and it's going to give me the same result as the find method. If the substring is not present in our original string, find gives me a minus one, whereas um, index, sorry, I meant to type index here, gives me a, an error if it's not found. Uh, let's see, strip. Strip is a method that is very useful when you're cleaning um, text uh, that you find somewhere. Uh, that has perhaps leading characters. 
Uh, this is very typical. So let's do quote uh, equals, I'm going to concatenate four spaces, one, two, three, four, plus the previous um, contents of quote. And so now if I look at quote, you see that I've got some leading characters over here. Those are sometimes a little pesky and they bother you and you want to get rid of them and so you can use quote dot um, strip and I give strip the arguments uh, of the actual character that I want to remove and I think the default is the default is a um, space so let's see if that works. Yes it does. These spaces have disappeared. The other one, the final one I'm going to show you is the split method. Split method returns a list of um, all the words in this, in this string. So let's see what that does. Here we go. I split the quote into all of its words. What comes first, using or understanding? The natural mode of learning is to first use. Here is our second demo showing you a little bit about how to play with strings using string methods and you can follow along using try.jupiter.org and good luck. I hope you like it.